And so um, appreciate everyone waiting. It looks like we've got a, good, a, a great crowd of people that joined today's webinar. Today's really gonna serve as the part two in our Glue Plus webinar series, the first of which was geared around the Glue Plus architecture. So it was really centered around talking about the data warehouse component of the Glue Plus subscription, which is AWS Redshift, talking about the integration pipeline or the, the integration connectors through Glue, as well as the BI tool Looker. So today what we're gonna be doing is really diving deep into all things Looker and more so on the customer facing experience. So what are users experience when they're logging in and leveraging Glue Plus on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, I wanna start off just by reviewing kind of one of our more recent uh, Looker enhancements that we pushed live, which is our Looker embed functionality. So what that does at, at the highest level and I'm going to share my screen here, is our team has developed an embed experience for Looker, which pushes all things Looker directly into your Glue Pro store. Um, one sec. So the embed is gonna live directly within the Glue Pro store itself. And what that really means is that when you're building custom reports or considering where you want to access those custom reports, all of that's gonna be available underneath this BI tunnel tab. So when you click into BI tunnel, you're going to have some different selections that relate to Looker and you'll have different sections for explorers, which is going to, we'll walk through this in more detail in a second. This is kind of gonna be your home base for starting off with any report building. You'll have a full list of your integrations as well as some different buckets or explorers of data that you can start off with. Additional to the explore page, you'll have a dedicated section for looks. You can think about a look as like one individual metric or piece of content within an overall dashboard. And then you'll have a section dedicated to dashboards. All of these dashboards are going to be a combination of different looks. And we'll talk a little bit more about how you choose to save that content in some ways that you can be more efficient with your report building by way of this specific functionality. Um, for the purpose of today's demo and really diving deep into Looker, I'm just going to be logging directly into one of our Looker demo experiences. I'm being told that you guys can't see the screen, so just bear with me here for one moment. Okay, this should be sharing now. And we'll we'll go back to that. Actually, let's let's do that now. So I'm gonna go back to Glue Pro just so that you guys can see what I was sharing before. So as I was mentioning, you've got the BI tunnel drop down here within your Glue Pro store. As soon as we enable that for our clients, this will become available. I'm gonna quickly go through what I was just talking through before. This explore sections, it's going to be where you access at the beginning stages of report building all of your different sets of data. You've got a section for looks. Those are just individual pieces of content and a dedicated section for dashboards. So we're really excited to have all of Looker's functionality directly inside of our application. And what's cool is that our team's actually gone ahead and made some enhancements to that experience by including things like different folders for you to store that content in which specific Looker users will or will not have access to. So it's a way to kind of govern the different dashboards and looks um, 
that your team builds. So I'm going to switch back to sharing the Looker Direct screen, and then we can dive into that experience. Cool. So as you see, you can see here, we're just logged directly into Looker. This page that we're looking at right now is kind of home base. Um, it's going to be the place where all dashboards are stored. The equivalent of that within the glue store will be that dashboards and looks tab. But all of the, the rest of the experience will, will look very similar. Um, primarily where we're going to spend our time today is going to be within this explore tab. And we're going to run through some examples of, first and foremost, we're going to talk about the structure of how we've set up Looker. There's you know a lot that goes into implementing any BI tool really, but specifically with Looker, I think it, it'll showcase the ease of use with getting to some really advanced reports. And then we'll move our way into um, building out some looks, adding them to dashboards and discussing the different ways that potentially you and your teams can leverage Looker and distribute content. So I'm gonna click in uh, explore. And what you'll notice is that a full list of integrations are populated. And for our customers, when they log into Looker, this is only going to show you integrations that you actually have connected to your glue store. So it's hyper specific, you know, and geared towards only the integrations that you as the customer use. In this case, I'm in a demo environment. So I have a full list of those integrations. And this is the area, again, where you would start by searching for the integration that you want to query for. In this example, I'm just going to type in Shopify. And what you'll notice is that contained underneath each of these integrations is a subset or an explore of data tables. So each one of these categories, channel spends, customers, orders, products, they all have you know, sets of data tables that are included within. And the purpose of that is really to help our clients get to the original set of data that they want to use as their foundation for their reporting a little bit quicker. And as I'm scrolling through these different explores and hovering over the information icons, that will also help point you in the right direction of where you need to start from the custom reporting side of things. So in this case, looking at orders, this is going to be transactional level data. And as we click into this, you'll notice um, some of the additional sets of data we have in here. So I'm going to go ahead and drill into Shopify orders. And that's going to take us into the report builder view. So this is where, you know, the actual work of, you know, putting together a custom report will come to life. And the great news is that that experience is a point and click or drag and drop type of experience. So for anyone that may be joining this webinar is the, you know, the first one they've joined as it relates to Glue Plus, just know that everything that we're looking through today does not require technical experience. Really the, the purpose of our partnership with Looker is to really help enable our end users to have access to that advanced data without being a technical uh, contact. So you'll notice in Report Builder, I'm drilled into this overall Shopify orders explore, but you'll see that there's about 10 to 12 different Shopify endpoints or data tables contained within this. And what's important about that is that we've configured each explore this way to contain as many data tables as possible based on the ways that our customers use this data because this data is pre-joined together meaning the relationship between all of these tables has already been formed in the backend code that we've, we've um, pushed to production in our implementation. And that's going to allow you, when you have instances where you need to pull some data from the products table and some from the order items table, for example, and have that within one singular chart, there's nothing extra or additional that you'll need to do in order to do so. And we'll, We'll go through some examples of that as we dive into this a bit further. Additional to the Shopify tables that you see here, throughout all of the explorers, whether it's for Shopify, GA, Klaviyo, any integration, you're always going to see these two top tables included in every explorer. 
the first of which is going to be this glue accounts table. And the glue accounts table is pretty critical, mainly for our clients that have uh, multi-store or they manage multiple domains. So this table is going to allow you to either select one specific domain that you want to start pulling data from, or it's going to allow you to aggregate data across many different stores, which a ton of our customers have as a use case. So we'll show some examples of that as well. Custom fields. This is going to be a section. It's not necessarily a table, but it, you can think about this as a way for you to manipulate the raw data that's being pulled in through our partners' APIs. So all of this data down here, a lot of that is going to be the raw data as we receive it from the API. There will be instances where you know there's going to be a need to uh, make a custom calculation or define something slightly differently. That's where this custom fields will come into play and we'll review that too. So diving into these different tables in the Shopify orders explorer, when I expand each of these tables, you'll have a full list of all of the different data points and fields that we pull in. There's some different sections that are good to know, and I'm just gonna briefly cover those as well as some of the options that you have for each individual field. So first and foremost, I'm gonna cover these dimensions. You can think about a dimension as the raw form of the data point or field that we pull from the API. So there's nothing that's done to this field. There's no calculations on top of it. There's no inclusions or exclusions. These are the raw fields as we receive them. Scrolling down, you're going to see this section for measures. These measures are additional areas where the glue team has implemented enhancements that help expedite the report building process by taking care of some of those calculations. So if I expand this standard measure section, you'll see some pretty typical metrics that most e-commerce merchants, agencies, et cetera, um, track and report on. So something like the number of orders, some of revenue, some of quantity, so on and so forth. The reason that we've done that is just to take it one step further. If I want to report on number of orders and I'm looking at these standard measures, all that I need to do is just click this once and that data field is going to populate in this table. Whereas with the raw fields, if I was looking to capture something like number of orders and I only had these raw fields, what I'd have to do is find the appropriate field, in this case, order ID, and I'd have to do that calculation myself, which is still only a couple of clicks. I can very easily take a distinct count of orders like that, but we've gone ahead and just built those out just to make it a little bit quicker for our clients. I'm gonna jump back up to the top. Another release that we've pushed recently is extends our clients the ability to analyze data against a comparison period, whether that's something traditional like year over year, period over period, month over month, but also for arbitrary periods. And so you'll notice we have a current order date range filter and a comparison order date range. So that's going to allow you to select period one as the current and period two as the comparison. You'll see that throughout a few of these different tables. So last thing before we jump into the fun, the fun parts are some of the options as it relates to these fields. So as I'm looking at the different fields within this table, you'll notice that as I hover over, I've got a handful of different options. On the rightmost side, I've got this more option. That's going to, for the field that I'm hovered over, give me the ability to bin or group my data if I need to. Most importantly, it's going to let me to aggregate this data. And there's some you know, really quick aggregations, the most common ones being a distinct count, a sum, an average, so on and so forth. So just know this is you know, something that's used frequently in the report building process. Working my way left, we also have the ability for all of these different dimensions to use them as filters. So simply by clicking that filter by field icon, you'll see that the revenue field pops up into my filters section 
And now I can make a simple logical statement that says, I only want to look at data where the revenue is greater than or equal to, you know, 50 or 100, whatever that is for your store or stores. Lastly is the ab uh, ability to pivot the data by whatever field that you're hovered over. This comes in handy if you're trying to analyze data side by side in a table. So if you're familiar with pivot tables, you'll love this. We'll also walk through an example. I think at this point, we're ready to go ahead and kind of dive into what that report building experience looks like. So I'm going to start super basic, just show some of the functionality that we just talked about. And as we go, I'm going to add a few of these, save some of this content so that we can, at the, the tail end of this call, circle back to the dashboard experience and what that looks like in terms of usability. So let's just make something very simple like showing net revenue over time. So the first thing that I'm going to do because I'm in a demo environment and it has, you know, anonymized data in here, I'm going to reduce this data set down by using this glue accounts table. And so I'll simply add that as a filter and use one of our testing IDs. That's going to be step one for me. The next thing that I'm going to do, because in the example that we just spoke about, we wanted to look at net revenue over time. I'm going to find some sort of date field. And luckily within the orders table, we have an order date field. And when I expand that, I'll have some different options as far as how I want to group that data. So whether I want to break my data down by month or year, quarter. For now, I'm just going to simply break this down by date. And as a best practice, whenever you're starting to build something, I'd recommend um, also using the date as a filter just to make sure you're not trying to pull, you know, the full extent of your data each time you're running this report. So for now, I'm also going to add that date as a filter. And I'll just say the last 30 days. Next, I'm going to grab some of my measures. So there's a couple of different options here. I can refer down to these pre-built measures that we reviewed earlier and start clicking my number of orders or my revenue. For the purpose of this, just to show the functionality with the raw data, I'm gonna come to my glue custom measure section. And for net revenue, in this case, let's just say the example is revenue minus shipping minus tax. I'm gonna go ahead and take a sum of my revenue since we're breaking this table down by date. So that's gonna sum up the revenue from all of the orders in the time frame that we have selected. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing for shipping and for tax. What you'll wanna do next is make sure that your columns are named the way that you want them, formatted the way that you want them, which is all made very easy by clicking this gear icon above the column and selecting this edit option. And this is where now I can rename this, I'll just call this gross revenue. Within field details, I'm gonna select US dollars and we'll do two decimal places. I'll do the same thing for shipping and tax. So you probably get the gist and you can see how those are changing as I update and edit those. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and run this data set just so we can start to see some of that data populating. And the last thing that we'll wanna do to get one singular column that shows us our net revenue is take these different components, which we've talked about and create a calculation. There's a couple ways that you can access that calculation function. The first of which, and probably the most easy, is going to be this add calculation here. You could come into the custom field section that we reviewed earlier and go ahead and add that from there as well. So I'm going to click add calculation. And what happens is a little expression writer is going to pop up. This will actually auto populate for you as you begin typing. And if you make a mistake, it'll actually suggest um, a path towards resolution in this right-hand side. So I can just type rev and my gross revenue column is going to pop up. I'll do minus ship, select my shipping and same for my tax. 
I've just created my net revenue calculation here based on these different components that I've pulled into my table. And now I can name this net revenue, select US dollars in my formatting. And when I click save, you'll notice that a new column is generated. So there's our net revenue just like that. And we can go on to, now that we've, we have the data the way that we wanna see it, we can go on to visualizing this set of data just by expanding this visualization tab. So when I expand that tab, you've now got a full um, list of different types of visualizations that you can choose from, whether that's a table, bar chart, scatter plot, line chart, there's many different options here. In addition to the actual visualiza visualization type, there are a bunch of different formatting options to make this unique and specific to the outcome that you're trying to drive. So I'm just going to go ahead and select a line chart for now. And what you'll notice is that inherently this chart is going to pull in everything from this table below. And if we're just trying to look at net revenue, we might not necessarily want to be analyzing all of the different components as well. So that's no problem. We can just click the gear icon on each column and click hide from visualization so that my chart above is only showing that net revenue figure. So I would say that this is one complete metric in or look within an overall dashboard. So let's just go ahead and save this. Very top right corner, I can go ahead and save. And I have some different options, whether I wanna save this and start a new dashboard, save it to a dashboard that already exists, or save it as a look, as we mentioned earlier, which is a way that I can repurpose that metric across many different dashboards. So that's a helpful function when you're building something that's kind of foundational to your business that you tweak, you know, for certain exercises, you tweak in specific ways. It's a good way to not have to, to start from scratch each time. For now, I'm just gonna save this as a new dashboard and we'll call this two plus demo. And I'm actually gonna jump out to that just given our time and show you some ways that we can start continuing to build based off of the work that we just did. So I'm going to click this view dashboard hyperlink. And now we're in the dashboard view. So this is where folks would come to interact with the content that's made. The equivalent of this, and it will look exactly the same inside of the glue store is again, going to live under that BI tunnel tab. This is the section that you'll be able to, you know, manipulate the size of things, the positioning of things rename things as you see fit. Um, but more importantly, I think there's two main things I want to talk about here. The first of which is going to be the ability to filter directly from this dashboard view. So you'll notice that in this section of filters up here, the two filters that I used to create this metric automatically pulled into the dashboard. That was glue account ID in the order date. But if I build this and I'm using it, I say, well, I actually had someone reach out to me internally and they need to know how the CPC Google channel is. And you already have this dashboard. Rather than rebuilding, you can simply come into the dashboard, select filters and add filter. And what you'll see is that that same Shopify orders explorer that we used previously to build this chart becomes available to select filters from. And the great part about this is that when you have 10, 20 different things in one singular dashboard, if they're, if those metrics are across many different integrations, those integrations will also be listed here to select filters from. Right now, we only have data from the Shopify orders. So I can click into orders, find whatever table that I want to pull a filter from. In this case, I'm going to go right back to the orders table and select my channel. And then just a few, a few things to note here. There's a, a set of different controls. This is really just going to dictate how your specific filter operates, whether you want check boxes or button toggles or drop down menu. I always like to use this advanced filter because it comes with some pre-built logic, which can really be helpful if you're filtering for things 
um, that have a specific nomenclature like products, even with channel, if you just wanted to look at something that contains CPC, so that CPC Google and CPC Bing get pulled in, it's just good additional functionality to have. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that. And what you'll see is that now we have our channel filter, which applies right now to this, this chart. So that's the first thing to know there. The second thing that I wanna cover within this dashboard view is the ability to build off of the existing content that you've made. So let me go ahead and save this. And let's say we were using this metric and we wanted to see how our orders were trending along with our net revenue. Again, rather than rebuilding this whole chart, I can simply hover over this tile, explore this data from here, and it's going to populate all of that great work that we just did earlier so that I don't have to go, go back and redo that. And now I can very simply come into my orders table, find my number of orders, and click that and click run and now my chart's going to show me my net revenue and my orders what you'll notice when this loads is that the orders because the actual figures for those orders are so much lower in comparison to the scale that that is for net revenue we may want to adjust this chart and make this something like a dual y-axis chart i think it's a good opportunity to highlight some of the visualization settings that we have so within this top right corner, you'll see an option for to edit. And this is going to be where you can manipulate the way that you're plotting the data, the series of data. If you wanna add trend lines or weighted averages, this is the section to do that in as well. For this case, we just simply wanna make a dual y-axis chart. So I can come to my y-axis tab and I can find my two different metrics my number of orders and my net revenue. I'm just gonna click and drag number of orders to this right axis section. And now you can see that since number of orders has its own axes, it's trending much more in line with the net revenue so that you can actually see in comparison to one another how they're doing each day. So now that we made our modification, I can continue to modify this as much as I see fit for the, the sake of time, let's say that this was the extent of the modification we wanted to make. I can now save this content either, again, as a look to a totally different dashboard, start a new dashboard, or I can save it right to that existing one that we were just in earlier. So now I can find our Glue Plus demo dashboard, save that content. And when I access that dashboard, now you'll see that that second chart appears. What's great about this is that I haven't in any way manipulated the original tile that I was using as my foundation for this new metric. So it's a really good way, especially when some of your, your charts and tables that you build have a lot of different data points in them. You're probably gonna have instances where you can extract a lot of different metrics based on that one primary metric that you spent a lot of time building. So I can name this net revenue versus orders. And I've got the second part of my chart here. Now, another good example to walk through with um, using the explore from here is let's say that you have an example where you want to uh, actually combine your e-commerce data with some advertising data or with your analytics platform, GA. If I explore this data, even though we have in all of our explorers the pre-join data, meaning within the Shopify integration, we've, we've already taken care of a lot of the joins for the Shopify tables, there's instances where you need to join data across different integrations. And the way that you can do that is by using this options menu up top and selecting merge results. And when I select merge results, essentially what this is going to let me do is it's going to let me take this first data table that I just built. And it's gonna let me create a second data table to merge and combine. So a new window will pop up 
again, with a full list of your integrations. And now I can select my second integration. I'm just gonna pick Facebook for this example and click into my table. The, the only things that you're gonna wanna make sure you do here are probably match up the filters that you used on the first table. So I had glue account ID. And I also had the order date. In this case, we'll use the timestamp date. And that's really gonna serve as the link between both tables or the primary key. So I can add in my timestamp date. I'll also do the same filter that I did previously. And then I can add whatever metrics from Facebook that I wanna pull in. So I'm just gonna pull in my sum of spend so that I can see how my net revenue, my orders and my spend are doing. And I'll run this data table. And once this populates, I can go ahead and click save. And it's gonna show me this nice little summary page here. That's basically telling me what I'm going to do with this merge. And this won't permanently affect anything. So it's okay if it takes a few times, but it's essentially telling me you're taking the Shopify orders data and you're using the order date to merge to the Facebook paid placements table on the timestamp date. And what you'll see below is that we've got our Shopify data listed. And now we have our sum of spend or cost from Facebook included in one table. And I really can continue to do this across as many integrations as I need to. So if I wanna add in, let's say uh, Google AdWords data to get my total spend figure, I can click this add query, select my third integration, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna match up my Google account ID filter. I'm going to go into the campaigns table and grab my timestamp date, as well as filter it for last 30 days. And then I'll grab my sum of cost, which is Google AdWords version of spend and run this data and save it back to the same table that we were just in. So you can see here how we're really wrangling and joining data together to get that holistic view for our metric. So I'm going to save that. Now that I've got everything here, I'm going to go ahead and run this data. Again, we still have the, the option to do any calculations that we need to. So if I want to combine my Facebook spend with my AdWords spend, I can add a calculation and grab my sum of spend and add it to my sum of cost. We'll save that. And now when I expand the visualization tab, there are many other metrics that are showing here, but I'm gonna reduce this down, what's shown in my chart to my number of orders, my net revenue, and just my total spend. So now I can see all of these stacked up against one another. Alternatively, I can select whatever other chart type that I wanna use maybe stack these so that I can see per day, my spend, my net revenue, et cetera. And then I can save this back to the dashboard. You can go back out to that. So hopefully you can see how, just how you know quick it is to get to some of these more complicated things that typically Involve, you know, can involve pulling data from two, three, four different sources, trying to combine that together in something like a sheet, you know, a Google sheet or an Excel file, then trying to visualize it. Whereas you're very quickly able to, to kind of get all of that data together and start visualizing it all within one place here. We've got our third chart. I'm going to save that. We've got about 10, 12 minutes left. I want to touch on um, just a couple options as far as what you can do with this content once it's created. And then I want to make sure you guys have 
you know, five or so minutes to ask any questions at the end. So really quickly, a few different ways that you can access this. Of course, you could log directly into your glue store, go into BI tunnel, view and interact with those reports throughout the different folders that you have. Alternatively, all of these reports can be downloaded as a PDF or a CSV. It's helpful if you're trying to load something into Clavio or Facebook for an audience. And then the last option that you have is to go ahead and um, schedule delivery, which is going to be a way that you can automate email sends out to groups of groups of users. And what's great about this option is that you have the ability to send it right now or schedule a cadence if it's something that needs to be sent, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 9 a.m. to X people. Um, I think the benefit here is that you don't necessarily have to be a Looker user in order to receive an emailed report. So that really helps enable our customers when it comes to investors, executives, things like that, that they don't necessarily need to be fully involved in everything else. They just want to receive this report. They can do so in the form of a CSV, a PDF, or an embedded PNG, which is always kind of a nice touch. All right. Um, I think that, you know, I know that was a lot, especially with some of the difficulties that we had earlier in getting this call ramped up. Hopefully this gave you a good kind of look into how our customers operate out of Looker, some of the ways that we've set up and enabled Looker, um, and just know that this, this series will continue with varying different topics. So definitely hope to see you guys in some of those future webinars. I'm going to go ahead and open it up in the last 10 minutes here for any questions that you guys have, and I'll try to answer those as best as possible live on today's call. Okay, there is one from Pete. It says, instead of adding filters within each look, wouldn't it be better to apply filters to given looks via the dashboard view? It's a great question, Pete, and it really just depends on the use case that you have. I'd say the majority of the time, it's more beneficial to go ahead and add those filters at the overall dashboard view so that they apply either across all looks within a dashboard, or you can also select, you know, which metrics have that specific filter applied to them. There are instances where you'd want to add a filter while you're actually creating the look itself. So imagine having a dashboard and 50% of it, you want to be um, filterable and dynamic with a date range picker or some other filter. But then you also within that dashboard have some metrics that are like, should always be hard coded to something like month to date or year to date. Creating that metric that's hard coded as month to date, you'd want to do that while you're creating the look itself, um, just so that it's not dynamic with the date picker that you add to the entire dashboard. So there's some just some really different use cases, but uh, great question there. All right. Any other questions? Ah, will we be running a session on forecasting? That's a, a great question. Definitely something that we want to revisit in this webinar series. So for anyone who's a little bit newer to all things Looker, within Looker, you have the ability through some built-in functionality to forecast out based on a set of inputs. And so you'll notice that when we're in this dashboard view, we have this forecast option. This is actually driven, and, and there's some great documentation around this that we can um, distribute to you, Pete. This is built off of an ARIMA model, which is like an autoregressive model where you can select the metric that you wanna forecast out and then you can enter the period that you want to forecast out in the prediction interval, which is just a, a percentage. If your business has seasonality, you can account for that as well. And basically what 
you know, what's going to happen, it's going to use the actuals that you have in the selected chart for that time period. And it's going to project out data by way of a dotted line. So right now this line's solid. You'll notice that when this loads, I might, honestly, I might be looking at too short of a time period here for it to, to forecast. Um, but yes, we, we will have, um, sessions where we cover specific parts of in different pieces of functionality that Looker provides. The other one just off the top of the head that I'm sure a lot of you would be interested in learning about is uh, alerts. And so that's basically a feature where you can set a threshold for a specific metric. And a good example of that would be if you have a handful of products that are like your most sold products and you never want them to be out of stock from an inventory standpoint, you can create a metric and then set a, an alert that basically says, hey, anytime that my revenue falls below you know, 10 grand or my, uh, my on-hand inventory drops below 50, I want these emails to receive a notification. And it's kind of like a, a way to manage your business, you know, a data-driven approach to managing your business rather than having to stumble upon that by way of of someone letting you know internally. Um, but forecasting alerts are definitely topics we want to circle back to and spend some more time on. All right. Any last calls? Okay. Well, if anything comes to mind um, post call, definitely be sure to reach out to our team. We'll be sending a follow up which contains the recording to this video. So if you got distracted or need to circle back to anything for more info, um, you'll have that as well as access to our team. But I really appreciate everyone jumping on the call. Again, thank you for bearing with us. And, uh, you know, while we were working through that technical difficulty, and look forward to continuing this series and seeing you guys on those calls. All right, cheers. Have a good day.